Hi there, my fellow Java programmer. In this episode, you'll learn about the different or else methods that Opshell has, what the difference is between these methods, and how to use them. So let's get started. Go back to the Optionals test class and insert a new test method and call it something like Optionals Part 3. And then you just go back to the test method from last episode and copy the any potters and optional y find wife lines down in your test. And just a quick recap, find wife has a look at the wives of a president and if their first name has starts with a specific letter. And if there is such a wife, you get the wife back. And if not, you get an empty optional back. Right. At some point later on in the code, you usually want to work with the wife directly and not just with an optional wife. So what can you do if the optional is empty? What about a default wife? It sounds quite funny with wife, but with optionals, what you can do is call the or else method. And let's say you just want to return Melanie if there's no wife and Mel Melanie has no children. So you call empty list, right? You extract the whole thing into a variable, call it plain wife. And then you print out the wife to the console. So in that case, if the president has a wife with starting letter M, we will have the plain wife in here, or else we will just get Melanie back. Now let's run the test, see what happens. Takes a second to boot up, compiles, and as you can see in the console, we get Melanie back because our president wasn't initialized with any wives, so there's nothing to find. Good, now let's continue and again copy the two lines, call it plain wife 2 now, plain wife 2, plain wife 2. And there's a different, or let's say an alternative, or else method, and it's the or else get method. Let's see what it can do. So now you don't put the wife in here, but you put in a function which will return the wife later on. And as you can see, Apart from the function call, it looks identical. Let's run the test again, see what happens. Now in the console, you'll get plain wife twice. Now what's the difference? Actually to show you the difference, let's just quickly extract new wife to a method. So create new wife, right? Now IntelliJ is smart enough to see that line is the same line. You call yes, right? And now put in a system out print on create new wife method was called. Then up here, you replace the thing with a method reference, right? So here you call the method and here you put in the method reference. And now to show you the difference, let's give the president a wife. So let's say any potters get wives, add new wife, and then you go Emma, maybe. Again, an empty list. Collections empty list, right? You run the test again. Cool. Now, what do you see in the console? First of all, you see create new wife method was called, and then you get Emma back without the E. And then plain wife 2 is also Emma, but without the create new wife method was called. And that's because up here with or else, you basically call the method actively yourself and you evaluate the method every time you run through the or else path. And with or else get, the method is called lazily. So only when the optional is empty, then the method is created. And that comes in quite handy if you have an expensive method call down here and you don't want to call the method every time, even though you have a wife or you found a wife. Good. Now, last but not least, copy these two lines again. This time it's plain wife three, right? And there's also the option to do a or else throw. And that comes in handy if you, ex well, in the case of a wife, it doesn't make too much sense, but imagine you have a find by ID method and you expect that ID to be in your database because it's internal to your system. And then you want to throw an exception if the ID isn't found, if someone else deleted the record that the ID references while you're working on it. So in that case, again, it's a function 
And you can simply say, well, in that case, there's a new illegal state exception. No wife was found. You don't throw it. You simply return the new illegal state exception. And now let's see what happens when you run the test again. That didn't make too much sense because now we have a wife and the or else case isn't evaluated. Let's delete the wife up here, run the test method again. And this time you'll see the first two cases, we get the plain wife, plain wife two, and then we get an illegal state exception as expected. And our test aborts here and doesn't print out plain wife number three. Congratulations, by now you should have a solid understanding of how Java's optionals work. And up next for you are some more advanced topics like the Java date and time handling. So let's get right after it.